May the words of my inadequate tongue and broken imperfect thoughts be God-breathed to compel your heart. May they reach into your minds and lives and challenge, inspire and nourish as the Spirit wills. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Week has now reached its zenith. As the Gospel might say, the hour is upon us. If you have journeyed with us this Holy Week, exploring the impossible stretch between injustice of this fallen creation and the perfection of divine justice, you will find today begins the tridium that is the axis that all creation turns on. Maundy Thursday, or Holy Thursday, is the most complex and profound of this Holy Week, saving only the Easter Vigil. It celebrates both the institution of Christ himself, of the Eucharist, and the institution of the priesthood. And as you heard, the lectionary packs so much into today. There is the washing of the feet of the disciples, the Passover meal, and the institution of the new commandment each worthy of a couple of hours of study, each reading filled with a constellation of stars glimmering into the deep magic imbued into the gospel, each offering poetry and piety and resonating the words of the prophets and Jewish holy texts. A myriad moments from the ethnic memories of this nomadic tribe conjured in the mystery and majesty of a perfectly orchestrated meal. The Tridium, these three days between Maundy Thursday and, the, and Easter, sings with such thundering significance of cosmic drama that one might read it over and over again, over a lifetime, as we do in the liturgy making the grief and suffering of this life almost bearable. Today marks the beginning of the refrain of a ballad that began at the dawn of creation. But let me bring you back to our theme of love and justice. The last three sermons we spoke about justice, or rather about injustice, and the suffering and grief humanity was mired in, we, as the psalmist put it so eloquently at the beginning of the week, poured out our hearts at his feet. But today, this unfathomable divine who came wrapped in humanity's own flesh and bone, this son of man, picks up and turns us around and is at our feet. If you listen to the reading from John, chapter 13, carefully you would have heard that. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Earlier this week, warning against imagining ourselves morally superior as Christians, I quoted the theologian D.T. Niles and said, Christianity is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. But this... This is an act of extraordinary intimacy and vulnerability. This is not a king in royal robes, affording a gaggle of hungry beggars a feast from his charitable philanthropy. This is a half-naked man stripped to the waist in a towel. This is as vulnerable as he gets. This is a mother uncovering her breast to her feeble and faint baby, coaxing it to suckle at her flesh lest it dies from, ang from hunger. Peter objects, as only Peter would. You will never wash my feet, he says. He is saying this goes against the natural order of things. 
This is not okay. Jesus is upsetting the hierarchy of the cosmos. And though they haven't grasped the sheer extraordinary meaning of this act yet, Peter has some faint inkling that history is being overturned. He is saying what I suspect many a Christian has asked in the quiet whisper of our hearts that are most truthful and sincere and vulnerable. As the much loved hymn asks, how can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? For those of you perhaps like me, when you read the expulsion of Adam and Eve in Genesis and think, ouch, that was a bit harsh. This, this here, is the truth of it. When we left Eden, we were condemned to die. When Adam and Eve violated Eden, we were condemned to die. When Cain killed Adam, he was, um, uh, uh, he was contempt, condemned to die. We, mired in humanity's injustice and shame by divine justice and by the law, are condemned to die. Like the reading on Holy Tuesday, we thought God had turned his face away from us and wrapped himself in holy wrath at the sin of the injustices of the world. And yet, the divine has pursued us from Eden to Gethsemane, and today, this holiest of days, he has caught hold of us. And when we object, when we ask, how can it be? He shakes us like a mother might shake a child and says, no, you must be washed. You must let me tender to you. You must eat of my body or you will surely die. As I said before, this is a mother uncovering her breast to her feeble and faint baby, lest it dies of hunger. I repeat, Monday Thursday, this holiest of days, is when the divine pursuer catches up with the sinful, broken trail we have blazed across time and space. Since we left, since the Garden of Eden, aptly leading to another garden in Gethsemane, but I am getting ahead of myself because we will explore Gethsemane tomorrow. Today is about the Last Supper. Today is about the Eucharist. It is about eating his flesh and blood. Now, for those of you who has never had to explain this to somebody from, from another faith or even in another language, you might have some idea of how strange this might sound. To be honest, it makes Christian sound somewhat cannibalistic. How do you explain drinking blood and eating flesh? How can I communicate the significance of the Eucharist in eight minutes or less? This is an agape meal, this feast of love that met injustice with love and transformed the chromatic pains of flesh, of the broken wreckage of this world. I am not an eloquent enough speaker or a theologian to do this. But being an archbishop's advisor, let me turn to a, a favorite pet theologian, um, archbishop. Let me put you in Archbishop Rowan Williams' poetry for this. One day, God walked, pale from the gray step, slit-eyed against the wind and stopped, said, color me, breathe your blood into my mouth. I said, here is the blood of our people. There are their bruises, blue and purple, gold brown and pale green wash of death. These, God, are the chromatic pains of flesh. I said, I trust I shall make you blush. Oh, I shall stain you with the scars of birth. Forever I shall root you in the wood. Under the sun shall bake you bread of beech moss, never let you forth to the white desert, to the starving sand. But we shall sit and speak around one table 
share one world, one foot, one earth. For those of you who want to read that again, um, that's Rowan Williams' poem, um, Ruble. Tomorrow I will speak to you of the chromatic pains of flesh, of the white desert and the starving sand. I will speak to you about the blood-stained roots I have stood under and this nomadic humanity's immeasurable torment weighed into root tree on Golgotha as we journey between justice and love. But today, let me leave you in the sucker of that mother God whose breast you're feeding on. Today, let us taste and see flesh and blood of a divine mystery that bade you welcome, because tomorrow will be hard. As we grapple in the torment of the cross, tomorrow will be hard. But today, let me leave you in the soft lullaby of the poetry of Herbert. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back, guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack, from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, ah, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them, let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, say love, who bore the blame, my dear, then I will serve. You must sit down says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. Thank you to those of you who have come faithfully this holy week as we explored this series and followed the lectionary on the theme of justice to love. Tomorrow we will journey into the very heart of the crucifixion where we might share in the anguish of the passion of the extended agony of the eternal openness of Christ's mortal wounds that torments to the end of days. That's Pascal's words, not mine. And I hope on Easter Sunday, arrive on love's eternal hope. Amen. Mm -hmm.